I'm Scott Al Miller, and this is my everyday life living in Latin America. I'm an expat and an immigrant, and I am working to bring you a set of tools that are going to help you become an expat yourself, hopefully find yourself in a better life than the one you have now, find your happy place, and this is part of that series. So this is always free, we're never selling anything, and today we're going to be talking about the concept of becoming an intentional expat, and we're going to talk about that right after the bump. In almost everything I do in life, and if you know me personally, you will eventually figure out that a common theme running through everything that I feel and say and do is that I believe very strongly in intentionality. That is doing things in your life that are intentional rather than falling into them by accident or happenstance. It's an important way to kind of view the world. And especially because I'm a businessman and I do a lot of business consulting, I specifically have been a business consultant for the majority of my life, one of the things that is really powerful and something that businesses just don't realize is that they rarely make decisions where they sat down and thought about how they make the decision. They choose kind of at, at random based on emotions or something. And that is super dangerous for a business, but it's also super dangerous for you in your personal life. You don't want to choose a house or a car, when to get married, how to invest or becoming and how to become and where to live as an expat by just kind of, you know, feeling it out and seeing what happens. These are big decisions in your life. And while you do really ideally want to apply intentionality to even little things in your life, you can let it slide when you're talking about where you're going to get dinner or what you're, you know, which bowling team you're going to join. But when it comes to big life choices, you certainly want to stop and be a bit intentional. You want to think about what your goals are. You want to think about why you're doing it. You want to think about what the risks are. And I'm not saying that we want to face decision paralysis. That is a terrible place to be. And I fight that a lot with people. I'm pretty easy going on decisions and I'm a very take it as it comes kind of person. So for me, avoiding decision paralysis is easy, but for a lot of people, especially those who are planners, not perceivers, you're going to find decision paralysis to be a risk that you may face. So that is something to be aware of and don't allow it to happen to yourself. But we do, no matter who you are, what you're doing, you do want to make sure that in a life decision of this magnitude that you are stopping and taking a moment to figure out why are you becoming an expat? What do you want to get out of it? Where are you going to do it? And actually answer these questions. Spend some time planning all the parts. Understand what's motivating you. Understand what your goals are. Understand what's going to make you happy. And there's so many different aspects to being an expat. Do you need to escape a place? Do you need to end up in a certain place? Are you simply enjoying the idea of moving from place to place? Maybe you simply want to be a digital nomad and constantly move and you don't care about finding the right country. Maybe you're really easygoing and you're just going to find a country, try it out and move on if you think something else sounds better at some point in the future. Maybe you've got a family and dogs and there's no way for you to move on and you need to get it right. These are all things that you can figure out before you do it and take a moment to make good decisions, but also figure all the aspects of your life out. What would make you wait? What's stopping you from becoming an expat today? Probably something, but figure out what it is. Figure out those triggers. Figure out what you need to do to be ready a little bit. And I'm not saying just planning. I'm saying don't allow the decisions to be made for you. Don't allow timing or or just bad planning to, to leave you in a situation where, well, this is what's happening, so I'm doing that, right? Don't do a, well, this is the flight I was able to get, so I can't move to the place of my dreams, but I can move to this other place because I managed to get a flight. Or I sold my house and I needed somewhere to live, so I, I went to the closest place. Or I was starting to become an expat, and then I didn't think around how I would eventually get residency or where I was going to uh, be allowed to go, and, and now I'm stuck. And I decided just not to do it because I didn't plan. So planning is and a natural result of intentionalism, but the concept that I really want to get across is all of these things should be things that you intend to do. You should be making good decisions using logical processes. And of course, in something like being an expat, there are emotional components. And you can say the same thing for buying a house or a car. And certainly for 
choosing someone to marry, but it's also important to always apply logical aspects as well and don't allow the emotions to completely override logic. If logic says something is a bad decision, it's still a bad decision no matter how you feel about it. But if two things are both pretty good options and one logically is better, but your emotions are never going to let you accept it, and this one is a logically good answer, just not as good as this one, well, maybe emotions can play in. Understanding your intent, understanding the logic, good decision making, and then taking a moment with logic involved to say how much of my emotions am I allow, going to allow to guide me allows you to protect yourself. And you can say, okay, I know this is a little bit less good, but I'm going to feel better about it, even though it just doesn't make sense. I Everything that, you know, all of my listed needs, these things are better, right? Oh, I, I need a place that's... and and. Maybe this is true for me with Nicaragua, right? That's which is where I live. It's it's warmer than I like. I'm sweating right now because it's humid. It rained a little bit ago and now the sun's out and uh, I'm a little bit warm. I much prefer cooler weather and that is something that I can easily quantify. I love cool weather and I also hate the seasons. So I want a place that's cool weather, but year round, but never super cold, but definitely not hot. And where did I end up? A place that's always hot. But I have figured out that the thing I hate most is the shift of of temperatures over time. So I take steadily hot over hot and cold over different times. So that's important to know about myself and not something I was able to answer previously. I discovered that by moving to a place that's always a temperature that I would say I don't like and I don't like it, but I like it more than it being hotter and colder at different times of year. So sometimes you learn things about yourself throughout the process, but I'm able to say, well, there's a whole bunch of things about Nicaragua that on paper aren't exactly perfect, but I can't find another place that satisfies me emotionally as much. And that has a certain value. And for me, that overrides those things. And that's the most important thing. So that's my way of looking at that. But they are things that I consider. And I always try to apply that logic. So we're going to keep this one short today. The idea is that intentionalism is super important. And I know if you're watching this, that becoming an expat or being an expat is on your radar. You're thinking about it. And so I think just by mentioning this and telling you how important it is, that's hopefully going to be enough to set you on a healthy path. You're going to step back and say, wait, okay, being an expat is not something I should just someday decide to do. I should start making a plan. Does becoming an expat make sense for me? Why would I do it? What would make me not want to do it? Pros and cons, good decision making. Okay, decide that becoming an expat is something you want to do. When do I want to do it? Is there a time that makes sense? Because I bet if you sit down and do that for most people, it's either going to be now or at retirement or now or when I'm able to find a job that lets me work online or retirement. Those are generally the big trigger points in life, but you may have your own. And then the question, well, if it's now or when I get a job online, well, why aren't you looking for a job online if that's a trigger? What would hold you back after that? Well, you need to, I need to sell my house. Okay, is your house on the market? Why not? What, are you, what is uh, causing you to hold back? Use some intent. Don't allow, oh my gosh, I did these things, but I didn't sell my house. Now I can only move when my house sells. That could be in a week, in a year. I don't know. All right, take control, be intentional, and, and just start thinking through these different pieces. And we're going to give you on this series a lot of tools to becoming an expat. So don't worry about that. Worry about the decision process of simply saying, oh, I don't want to just watch some House Hunters International and one day get just over the emotional barrier and to decide to pack up and go when right now you're already thinking enough about it to start putting together your plan, to start building your logic, to start deciding on healthy things. For example, if you're watching House Hunters, instead of going, ah, I'm just going to kind of pay attention and someday uh, maybe I'll move somewhere. I don't, I don't know. And uh, you're watching Scott uh, to find out maybe a little bit about Nicaragua. No. Instead, when you're watching House Hunters, when you're watching Scott, when you're watching other channels go, is this the right country for me? Is expat the right thing for me? Is this answering this? Really pay attention and think and say, how does this apply to me? And then as soon as you're able to make good decisions, make them and then say, what's the next step? Make that decision, make good ones, keep things moving. Because the last thing you want to do is either decide you want to be an expat and then never manage to pull it off. Oh, I just, I just was never intentional enough. And you also don't want to find out that having been an expat would have been good, but you didn't think about it enough. 
and you don't want to suddenly decide to do it and realize you've lined up nothing in your life and you're not prepared and now it's going to be a struggle, you can make it easy, you can make it accessible, you can make good decisions, you can define all the things that matter. Take some time. Do those things. Start thinking about it with intent. And that's going to make a huge difference for you. Not just in being an expat, in everything in life, when you're going to start a business, same thing. You're going to buy a house, same thing. This mentality, it's important, and too many people miss it. Good, healthy decision-making is an art that will change your life. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the work that we do here, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And as always, I will see all of you tomorrow.